Shalom. Shalom to every one of you. I was told that there is a blackout. There are many places in the Philippines uh, does not have uh, electricity. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that many people are not able to connect to tonight's meeting because there is no electricity so no internet but nevertheless this message is recorded and i pray that in due time those who miss this message will come to this recording again and that this word of the lord will be able to not only bring edification but also to bring application and action on the part of the hearers. I want to start by telling you in Luke chapter 8, in verse 18, there is an admonishment here. Uh, an admonishment means it's a word that you must take to heart. It's a caution that you must take to heart and put it into practice and here in Luke chapter 8 in verse 18 and this is Jesus himself speaking to his church therefore take heed how you hear for whoever has to him more will be given and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. Now this is a very serious admonition from the Lord. He says here, in the context of the parable of the soil of the heart, starting from verse 13 he was talking about this from verse 11 actually he talks about this is the parable the seed is the word of god and then he says that there are different conditions of the heart the conditions of the heart and many people in the beginning they would hear the word of god and they would hear the promises of god and they would hear the prophetic word of god regardless of whether you believe in the prophetic or not and I pray that you do. Because Revelation 19 verse 10 says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You cannot take that away from the movement of the Holy Spirit and the operational function of the kingdom of God on earth. It's the spirit of prophecy. Now, I want to come back to this. The condition of the heart of the hearers is very important. Because some people and some pastors and some churches and ministers, when they hear all the wonderful promises of God and the prophetic words and encouraging and edifying words from the Lord, and they are encouraged, they are blessed, but yet after a while, because of doubt, because of unbelief, because of inaction on our part, because of passivity, we can allow thorns, tears and wares to come to the soil and choke the seed. And we know here that there are a condition of the soil where the word was planted, but then it says that the cares and the tares of the world choked the seed and it could not bear fruit. So it's very important that we take heed how we hear. That's why Jesus says that in verse 18 of Luke chapter 8. Take heed how you hear. It means that you are to pay special attention on how you receive the word how you steward the word, how you run with the word. Remember the Lord spoke to the prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 2 and he says, as you have 
heard and saw what I am showing to you. The Lord said to Habakkuk, Now write them down on the tablets of stone and run with the word, carry with the word. It means that we are to appreciate the word and appropriate the word. And run with the word so that you can see the accomplishment of the word. And run, carry with the word, for in due time, though it tarry, but it shall surely come to pass. Now what is the word that is in concern here? And that is a global revival. That is the kingdom movement of the Holy Spirit. And He is inviting every church, every minister and every ministry to be a part of that movement. And you cannot be a part of a movement unless you start a momentum. You heard me right. You cannot be part of a win unless you start the momentum to allow yourself to be aligned to where the wind is blowing. And so therefore, if you do not take heed, do not pay attention, and do not put action to what you have received, you are going to miss out on the river that is flowing. No doubt you are still going to be blessed. No doubt you are still going to function as a church, but that is all you are confined to. Because in these last days, can I say this again, and I'm not the only one saying this, there are hundreds of prophetic voices that has been saying this again and again over the last two, three years, especially in these last two, three years, since this global pandemic started. Have any one of you ever asked God, why did this pandemic happen? And what is the plan of God? And what is the purpose? What is the outcome? And what does God expect us to do to come out of this pandemic and to flow or to align ourselves with His will and His purpose. We should always question ourselves, what is happening and how do we partner with God in what is about to take place? Because one of the words of the Lord is, because of the lack of knowledge, my people perish. My people are not able to partake in the exceeding greatness of my promises that's Second Peter chapter one in verse four to five. You cannot partake of the exceeding greatness of His promises if you have a double-minded spirit and unbelief and doubt, and if you are inactive, or in another word, you are passive. And that's the reason why I want to start with this admonition: that unless we take heed of the word. And again, take heed also of the condition of our heart on how we receive the word and what we are going to do with the word. And also how we are to water the word to see it grow and to see the multiplication of fruits that comes out. Because when the Lord give a word, it shall not return to him void. It is, it is released to accomplish a purpose according to Isaiah 55 in verse 11. And so therefore, take it how you hear because for whoever has, whoever that is a good steward, a good manager of the word, that is a doer and one that applies and appropriate the word, he says that to that person, to that church, to that ministry, more will be given. But if you do not take heed, do not guard, and you do not appropriate that word, then it says, even what you have shall be taken away from you. Or in another word, the passion for revival could be taken away from you. The passion to see a global unity of the body of Christ could be taken away from you. The zeal for the house of the Lord could be taken away from you. And now I'm not the one saying this. The Lord is the one saying it. This is His word. 
And that's the reason why it is so important that we take every word of the Lord seriously and passionately, passionately, and then we apply it personally and corporately into our life and our ministry so that we can see the fruitfulness of the word of God. Glory to his name for that. Now, what is the word that we are talking about here? I want to show you what Dr. Liu wrote later on in the book of Acts and in chapter 4. Now, I like this passage here because this tells us that after Pentecost, and we know that in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, that the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God was poured out. In fact, that's the wrong terminology to be used. Theologically, you should say, the Holy Spirit came in power, like a mighty rushing wind, and like a strong pillar of fire. The same pillar of fire that led the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt. And that pillar of fire came on the upper room. That should be the right theological terminology to be used here. Hallelujah. And he came. And then after that, we know the church was born. We saw the early church that walks in signs and wonders because they have experienced the supernatural. And that's how the church is supposed to be like, even more so in these last days. And we are called to be a supernatural entity on earth that represents the kingdom of God and to be the administrator and the executor of his justice and his righteousness on earth, just as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, if some of you who are familiar with me, you may also discern that I am a little bit serious tonight with the tone of my voice because I am serious. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is very serious about those who are serious about Him. This is not the time to play around with the Holy Spirit. This is not the time to be complacent or to be lukewarm. This is not the time, especially for leaders, to be double-minded or to even have a doubtful or an unbelieved spirit. This is the time that you are to rise up. This is the time, the word of the Lord, for this coming season that we are already entering into. It's a time to rise up. And when I say a season, I'm not just talking about the year 2022 because this is the beginning of beginnings of many things. This is a time that churches need to rise up and to walk into their prophetic destiny to be part of a kingdom movement that God is unleashing over nations. Just as you have seen a global pandemic which touches every border of every nation, you are also going to see a global outpouring. Why? Because the book of Acts tells us that in that day, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men, your young women, they will see vision. There will be signs and wonders. Now, we have not yet experienced the fullness of that statement in Acts 2, 17 and 18 yet. We have not yet experienced that. We saw the beginning of that on the day of Pentecost. Why is it that I say we have not yet experienced the fullness? Because it is cumulative. Because that word itself says that in that day, I will pour out my spirit on all, all flesh. And it's talking about all tongues and tribes and nations. We have not seen that happen. On the day of Pentecost, it was only restrained to 120 on the upper room. So we are looking forward to that prophetic statement and many other prophetic statements made by great men and women of God that has prophesied in one accord by the Spirit of God about what is about to happen in these last days. 
And if we do not align ourselves and our ministry to what the Lord is doing, we are going to miss out on a lot. I give you one example. Why do you want to remain at a little stream when you can enjoy a mighty river? I say it again. Why do you want to remain comfortably secured in your own religious circle in a little stream when there is an invitation for you to come and to be a part of a mighty river that's about to be unleashed upon the earth? And so you have the choice to be either a part of a river or to be a part of a little stream. And whatever choices that we make, remember this, we are all accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ on the day of the Bema Seat judgment of reward. I make it very clear because the judgment seat of Christ for the body, for His body, for the church, is, a, is the judgment of rewarding us for what we have done, what we did for the body, for the kingdom. So don't miss out on the great things that's happening so that you won't miss out on the great reward and the recompensation that you shall receive when you see the Lord face to face. Hallelujah to that. Glory. Now, what is the Lord doing in these last days? And I say it again. I love this passage in the book of Acts chapter 4. Because if you will see from Acts chapter 2 to Acts chapter 4, there was another great shaking and another great outpouring that happened. And there was a time span between the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 until Acts chapter 4. And many scholars would agree with me on this, that there was at least 3 to 4 years time span that has elapsed. So meaning that, after the day of Pentecost, about three or four years later, we come to Acts chapter 4. And now again, the Holy Spirit did something that's very similar to the very day of Pentecost about four, three or four years ago. This is very affirming and reassuring because it tells us that there is always a continuous movement of the Holy Spirit. Ever since the day of Pentecost. And we have seen that throughout history. In fact, there were many, many great awakenings that were not even recorded in the historian books. Especially great awake awakenings that has happened after the 2nd and the 3rd century AD. Not much was written about it, but some were recorded by the early fathers, like Irenaeus and Augustine, and Eusebius, just to name a few. Then later on, we saw what was recorded was during the time of Martin Luther. And after that, you have, of course, other great movements that started in the 16th and the 17th, 18th, 19th, and then the 20th century as well. And then you have the Azusa. You have the Pensacola. You have the Brownsville. You have other great mighty move of God in Toronto. And there are many other move of the Lord in South America. Rosario, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires. And of course all throughout from the north to the southern tip of the African continent. And many more mighty move of God that happened within the underground churches of China that has never been recorded. And Indonesia, we only know about the one that happened in Indonesia through the writings of Mautari. But there have been many more. And I want you to hear this. They are going to be greater, greater. Why? Because the Bible tells us so. That in that day, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
And then it also tells us in Haggai chapter 2 in verse 9 that the glory of the latter day temple is going to be greater than the former days. And in chapter, in chapter 2, verse 5 of Haggai, he says, Once more, I'm going to shake the earth. Now, we are talking about something that's global. Don't miss the context here. It's global. It has nothing to do with what has happened in Israel. It's not even constrained to Israel because it says, I'm going to shake the earth and every nation. And then after that, in verse 9, he said, there will be a greater glory. So in the context, we are talking about a global movement, a global shaking that is a precursor to a global movement. And we have experienced the global shaking with the pandemic in 2020. So what's coming next? A global movement. Hallelujah. And God is inviting every one of us to be a part of this global movement. That's why we are seeing doors that are opening in this very year itself that we've been waiting for, that we've been knocking on, and we've been trusting, praying and fasting for. And we know that we are in the season where these, these doors are going to open. And therefore, I am opening that door right now for all the ministers and churches and ministries and all the leaders especially in the Philippines, especially in other nations of Asia, to come in, to be a part of that movement, to be a part of that a coalition that is global and that is in accordance to God's kingdom purposes. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I pray that they understand every word that I have spoken. What I want to say to you, if you still do not understand, then let me make it very plain, clear and simple. In these last days, it's no longer about your association, it's no longer about your coalition, it's no longer about your church. It's about the kingdom. It's about Jesus Christ, the King of glory. It's about, listen to what the Sami says, open your gates, lift up your heads. Oh, you ancient gates. Why? Because the king of glory is coming in. And in that context, he said, this is Jacob. The generation will seek his face. And this is the last day movement of the Lord. That he is inviting everyone to just open up their ministries to allow the king of glory to come in. And when the king of glory comes in, he brings his kingdom with him. So in these days, people of God, churches need to understand that you need to be converted to a kingdom mentality so that you can live in the kingdom identity so that you can inherit kingdom inheritance. That's why Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 and he says in verse 17 that the Father of glory may grant to you, may grant to you unless it is granted, you don't have it. So you need the Lord to grant it to you. For what? That He may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him as a father and as a king. And then in verse 17, verse 18, it continues that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened that you will know what is the hope of your calling. What is the hope of your calling? If you are a pastor of a church, praise God. But can I tell you that there is a greater call for you to just be a pastor of a church. There is a call for you to become a kingdom pastor of a kingdom movement. Hallelujah. And we are also seeing the reinstating of the fivefold of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, and the pastors. These are all part and puzzle of the mandate of Jesus the King for His church in these last days. Because if all these fivefold are operating in the early church, how much more glorious it would be in the last days? Because Haggai say the glory of the latter day temple is greater than the former days. And it says again in Ephesians 1 verse 18 that you will know the hope of your calling. And then it says 
that you will know what is the glorious riches of your inheritance in the saints. And you cannot understand and you cannot appropriate your kingdom in inheritance unless you have a conversion of a kingdom identity. And I want to say this again, people of God. One of the things that the Holy Spirit is emphasizing in these last days is churches need to be converted from a church mentality to a kingdom mentality. So that you can be part of a kingdom movement that is global. Yes, I say that again. It is global. God is bigger than your barangay. God is bigger than your city. God is bigger than your little nation. God is bigger than your church. God is global. That's what's happening in these last days. And that's why the Holy Spirit is inviting every one of us to come and to drink of the river and to be a part of that river. And don't just stay in the little stream. Hallelujah. Now with much said, I'll take you to what I want to share from Acts chapter 4. Because this is a blueprint. A blueprint of what you are going to see. What you are going to experience if you will follow that river and jump into that river. Don't be afraid to get wet in the Holy Ghost because too many people are too dry and you need to be, hear this, soak in the river of God. So Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 and I'll read to you here from the New King James. That when they had prayed, who are this day here? the early church and the context the background of this passage here was they were going through a great time of tribulation and testing and persecution they were being persecuted for their faith they were facing not only persecution they were facing martyrdom where they would be killed for what they believed and we haven't even experienced that intense persecution yet. Just a little pandemic, even though it's global, but it's little, have put many into a flight of fear. And it's time we get out from our insecurity and our comfort zone and to step into the glory zone of the Lord again. So the context here was in the midst of persecution, they assembled themselves and they cried out to God. And what did they do? They prayed. So I want to say this to you. It's time that we see the saints gathering again. Not just on a Zoom, but in a room. Hallelujah. Gathering again because they were in one place, gathered together, they assembled together, they were assembled together. Hallelujah. And I want to say this very quickly, that there are certain things that God would only do when the church comes corporately and assembling themselves together. Yes, God works wonders even though when you are having your quiet time with Him, He can work with you individually. But there are only certain things that God will do that is He will work through a body. Remember, the church is the body. And the body must be assembled together. Otherwise, it will be disintegrated and it will fall apart. That's what the devil wants to do by isolating us from one another. Hallelujah. But I want to say this to you, that the devil is a liar and the devil is a failure. Can I have an amen to that? Hallelujah. It's time that you rise up in your authority. It's time that you rise up and increase in your anointing. Oh, you servants of the Lord. And that's a word for someone. 
Now, when they had prayed together, verse 31, so the importance of prayer before revivals, hallelujah, the, the importance of gathering and pray and interceding. And that's why you can see that in the last two years, we see a greater emer emergence of, of prayer networks and prayer altars all over the world. Hallelujah. This is the time where your prayer life should increase. Hallelujah. Should be strengthened, should be edified. Hallelujah. And so they prayed. And when they prayed, what happened? The place that they were assembled together, you see the word there, they were assembled together at a certain location. And the place that they were assembled together was shaken. Just as in the day of Pentecost. So we see Pentecost version 2. And can I tell you, we are in another Pentecost version, I do not know, maybe 2000. Hallelujah. But we are anticipating another great shaking. And we are, no, we are saying this because we know it's coming. And we want you to be a part of that. So the place that they were praying together was shaken and it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, the, the word that is being used here, fill, pleroa, is a derivative of another Greek word, pleruu. Now what is the difference here? In fact, they are quite similar. Pleroa means that you are filled until you overflow to the rim. You overflow, abundantly fill. Pleru'u is a present continuous tense. It means that you are continually filled. If you say, oh yes, Terence, I, I, I have been filled by the Spirit of God two years ago. Wonderful. You need to be continuously filled, even now, tonight. That's the word pleru'u. In the Greek, it's a work tense that is present continuous. And again, in pleroa, that's the word being used here, it means to be filled until you overflow and continue to be filled after that even. And this is what's lacking in the body of Christ today. This, this is what's lacking in many Christians today. We thought that we were filled in the conference that we attended two months ago. Wonderful. Well, we, you attend a wonderful meeting last week or last night. Wonderful. You were filled. Praise God. But you need to be filled again tonight. That's why it's a continuation of being filled. Hallelujah. So I pray that tonight you're going to be filled again. Hallelujah. Until you overflow and you will be continuously pleru'u, filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then he says that they, will, they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Now, this is a year that God wants everyone who is called a Christian to start decreeing the word with bonus. Don't let the year, and of course, don't let the pandemic, whether it's Omicron or whatever con. Remember, I always say this to people, there's an Omicron. So what? We have an oh my God who is greater than the Omicron. No pandemic should stop the great commandment, the great commission, and the great collaboration. Of the body of Christ. Did you just hear that? No pandemic has the power to stop or hinder or delay the great commandment, the great commission, and the great collaboration of the body of Christ in these last days. And this is a collaboration. That's why it's called Unite and Ignite Asia. Hallelujah. Prakaha Dorosiprata. So they speak the word of God with boldness. And therefore, I want you to hear this. Don't let the year determine who you are or what will happen to you. But you have the power of the word because the word is life and death. It's the power of the tongue. You have the power of the word in your mouth to determine the year. You have the power of the word to change situation. 
Hallelujah. You have the power of the word to bring light to darkness. Light is always greater than darkness. No matter how thick the darkness is. The Bible says that even though there's deep darkness that covers the people. In Isaiah 60. But the glory of the Lord will be risen over you. And he said that the brightness of your rising is so great. That kings will even come to the brightness of that light that's in you. Hallelujah. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they started to speak the word of God with boldness. And this is the time that Christians and ministers of God should not be ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom. Someday, someday I will talk to you of the difference of the gospel of the salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. Someday. Hallelujah. If you would look at Acts chapter 1, in verse 3, after the resurrection, for 40 days, Jesus was preaching to them the kingdom. He was talking about the kingdom. He was not talking about salvation. Salvation is great, and all of us have received that. Praise God. But there is more to salvation. And that's to be a part of a kingdom that's called a commission to fulfill what Jesus commands us. And then without a collaboration of the body of Christ, you cannot fulfill a global commission. Because what the Lord is doing in these last days is global. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Then in verse 32, it says that now the multitude of those who believe the multitude, so we are talking about a remnant of consecrated believers, but they are not called the minority, they are called the majority, the multitude of them. They believe. Another word that you need to underline in your heart and in your mind tonight is you need to believe. Why Jesus say that? All things are possible to those who believe. Is because all things are truly possible if you believe. Hallelujah. The reason why you are still walking in the impossible is because you do not believe. But when you believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So, the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. And that's what we need today, people of God. We need the one heart, one soul unity in the body of Christ. Especially a one heart, one soul unity between denominations, between church affiliations, between cultures and nations. That we can have the one heart, one soul unity. Do you know that about three, four years after Pentecost, where this passage of chapter 4 happened, the church was a diverse multitude of many different types of people. We are not talking about just the Jewish ethnic group, but we are talking about the Greek, the Romans, and other races and tongues that are part of the diversity of the early church. So we are seeing a unity that transcends culture and races and traditions. Huh. And then it says, Neither did anyone say that any of the thing he possessed was his own. Hallelujah. I am praying to see that one day that the church will come to such a oneness in unity that what is mine belongs to you and what belongs to you belongs to me. That is all for common sharing. Why? Because we are a kingdom family. What is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. It is for the glory of Jesus. And no one say amen to that. And they have all things in common. Can I ask for this one simple thing? Can we have a vision in common? Huh. You know, the word division, the word division comes from the word divided vision. Or dual vision. Divided vision means it's equivalent to what? Division. 
And that's the reason why we need to have one vision. And what is that one vision? To come to a global unity of oneness so that we can usher in a global revival for the body of Christ that transcends cities and nations. Hallelujah. That is the apostolic mandate given to the body of Christ. And then verse 33 says, And with great power, you see that people of God, without great unity, you cannot experience great power. But when there is great unity, great power follows. Can you say Amen to that? With great unity comes great power. Verse 33 now says, With great power, the apostles gave witnesses to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Or in another word, Jesus became so real to everyone because Jesus was so real in their midst. They see the same miracles that Jesus did. In fact, greater works than what Jesus did. We shall do. He promised us that in John 14, 12. So it says here, uh, great power, and then it says also great grace was upon them. Great charis uh, charisma was upon them. Hallelujah. Now, verse 34 says, Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. You see that, people of God, when God starts to move, no one should lack anything. No ministry and no church should lack anything. Because it is the Lord who builds the church. And what God builds, He provides. Do you hear that? It is God who built your ministry, not you. You are just a partner. Hallelujah. And what God builds, He provides. And He brings to completion what He has started. Nor was anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. Hallelujah. I wait to see that day when men and women would sell their possession and give it to the kingdom movement of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then verse 35, and it says, And laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. Now, a quick summary here. Because this is a global mandate, I want to add on, I want to emphasize with the word great. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Daniel 11.32 that those who know the Lord their God will carry out great and mighty exploits. Hallelujah. So, that is the motto of John Wesley. Anyway, let's look at what we can learn from this passage. When they had prayed, so first thing, write it down. In these last days, God, God is stirring up great prayer. Great prayer. Hallelujah. Great prayer simply means prayer that is stirred, initiated, inspired, and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Many Christians need to change the way they pray because our prayer should no longer be self-centered but it should be kingdom-centered that we are called to do the Father's business. You take care of the Father's business, He will take care of your business because as you water others, you yourself will be watered. That is a promise. Great prayer. Second thing, Great feeling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we want to see the pleroa, abundant overflowing feeling again of the Holy Spirit. Great prayer, great feeling of the Holy Spirit. Great bonus follows after that. 
Remember, one of the words that God gave to Joshua when he entered the promised land was, Be courageous. Because if you are going to inherit the promised land, there are battles that you need to fight. And the good news is that we fight our battles from the place of victory. Hallelujah. So there must be great bonus. Be courageous. For God has not given to us the spirit of cowardice. We are not called to be cowards. We are not chickens. We are eagles. Hallelujah. So great bonus means be courageous. Hallelujah. Be audacious. Then you have another wonderful thing here that is great unity. In verse 32, that whole verse speaks about that great unity of one heart, one soul, having all things in common. That we are willing to lay down our life for one another. What a wonderful statement. Because Jesus says that in John 15, verse 13, He says that the greater love no none than this, than to lay down one life for one another. You can't even lay down your life for God. How can you lay down your life for another brother or sister? That's why the church needs to be converted into a kingdom mentality in these last days. Great unity. Then what follows after that is great power. Hallelujah. Great power will follow. And that word there is the operative power that comes with authority and the endorsement of heaven. Hallelujah. Then there will be great witnesses. It means that there will be great outreaches, great evangelism, great witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then after that, there is great grace. Huh. Great grace simply means that God, God pour out upon them great blessing, great favor, great joy, great strength, great divine appointments, great doors of, of being opened. That's grace is all part of the enablement. Grace is about the supernatural enablement of God for His children. Hallelujah. Grace always enables us to accomplish God's purpose on earth. Do you get that? And then it says in verse 34, now we see great generosity. Hallelujah. So people of God, this is what the Lord wants for every church, in every city, in every nation. That we can come into this great mandate, the great commandment, the great commission and the great collaboration of the body of Christ to experience great prayer, great infilling of the Holy Spirit, great boldness, great unity, great power, great grace, and great generosity. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Manta Rosep Radhiriara Sombranto Robamanadakasa. 